The second topic of our discussion is how microbes affect our lives. Our world is filled with microbes. They are in the air we breathe, the food we eat, and inside our bodies. Microbes affect our lives positively as well as negatively. We will begin this section by discussing a few of the historical findings that have benefited humans. We will then mention the role microbes play in our environment as the main recyclers. Then we will conclude by discussing the negative impact that microbes can have on our lives as well. Let's begin by discussing the golden age of microbiology. This period, which lasted from 1857 to 1914, was a time of rapid advances in the sciences. It was during this time that the germ theory of disease began to be accepted. Louis Pasteur developed a process we call pasteurization to kill bacteria in some alcoholic beverages. Today, pasteurization is used extensively in the dairy and brewing industries. Joseph Lister introduced the use of a disinfectant to clean wounds in order to control infection. Another milestone occurred when Edward Jenner demonstrated that it was possible to protect against smallpox by a procedure called vaccination. Robert Koch established a sequence of experimental steps for directly relating a specific microbe to a specific disease. These steps are known as Koch's postulates. The examples we have mentioned here, and the many others you can read about in your textbook, provide the foundation for several monumental achievements that followed in the 20th and 21st centuries. The 20th century was replete with milestones that have had profound effects on our lives. Paul Ehrlich speculated about a magic bullet that could hunt down and destroy a pathogen without harming the infected host. He found salvarsin, which was used to treat syphilis. This was the beginning of modern-day chemotherapy, the treatment of disease with chemicals. Some chemicals are called antibiotics, when made naturally by bacteria and fungi. The first antibiotic discovered was penicillin in 1928 by Alexander Fleming. Since then, many other antibiotics and chemotherapeutic drugs have been discovered. The discoveries we just mentioned are now part of our everyday lives. For example, many types of drugs to fight microbial infections are available at the local drugstore when needed. Vaccinations are part of routine visits to the doctor, and you can purchase antimicrobial disinfectants and antiseptics in the supermarket. Modern developments in microbiology have also shaped our relationship with microbes. Practical applications of microbiology are called biotechnology. Although biotechnology has been used in some form for centuries, techniques have become much more sophisticated in the past few decades. These research techniques are required to develop vaccines, understand our immune system, identify viruses, and more. Scientists working in the field of biology, called genetic engineering, or recombinant DNA technology, can alter microbes to produce proteins that they normally would not make. These substances include cellulose, digestive aids, drain cleaner, and many important therapeutic substances such as insulin and growth hormone. A very exciting and important outcome of recombinant DNA techniques is gene therapy, which is when scientists insert a missing gene or replace a defective gene in human cells. This therapy has been used to treat some diseases such as cystic fibrosis and Duchenne's muscular dystrophy, but the results are still being evaluated. Someday, many diseases may be treated with gene therapy. Biotechnology has also been applied to agriculture. For example, genetically altered bacteria have been developed to protect fruit against frost damage, and bacteria are being modified to control insects that damage crops. Bacteria have also been used to improve the appearance, flavor, and shelf life of fruits and vegetables. We will now discuss a few examples of the crucial role microbes play in our ecosystem. The first is in recycling of vital elements. Microorganisms are responsible for converting the carbon, nitrogen, oxygen, sulfur, and phosphorus in the environment into forms usable by plants and animals. Microbes are also used in the treatment of sewage. Sewage treatment plants remove the undesirable materials by combining various physical and chemical processes with the action of beneficial microbes. Another beneficial role for bacteria is bioremediation. This involves growing bacteria for the sole purpose of cleaning up pollutants and toxic wastes produced by various industrial processes. 
These are just a few examples of how microorganisms can have a positive impact on our lives and the world we live in. Now let's look at the impact microbes have on our health. The bacteria that normally inhabit our bodies make up our normal microbiota, or normal flora. They are harmless and in some cases, even beneficial. Unfortunately, under some circumstances, even normal flora can cause illness. There is a delicate balance between health and disease that depends on the body's immune system and the type of bacteria involved. Infectious diseases occur when the balance tips in favor of the bacteria. In spite of many effective chemotherapeutic drugs, infectious diseases not only are not disappearing, but seem to be re-emerging and increasing. The breakdown of public health measures for previously controlled infections has resulted in the emergence of tuberculosis, whooping cough, and diphtheria. Antibiotic resistance is also adding to the problem of re-emerging diseases. Emerging infectious diseases are diseases that are new or changing. The incidence of emerging infectious diseases is increasing as people go to new geographic areas or travel from one part of the world to another and are exposed to unusual microbes. In addition, evolutionary changes in existing organisms have also contributed to the emergence of new diseases. Examples of emerging diseases include the avian influenza A virus, severe acute respiratory syndrome, or SARS, West Nile virus, and AIDS. We have now discussed the big ideas. We started by reviewing the type of microorganisms and some of the more recent history of microbiology. We have briefly touched upon the many ways that microbes affect our lives. While they can cause diseases, it's important to know how microbes can also be beneficial to us and our world.